We have the review of Kim Berry's book, Diamonds and Curls, coming your way right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to Prince's Friend, exploring music through Prince. And today I have a review for a book that has been out for just a little bit of time. It came out just a little bit before Celebration 2019, and I got the chance to read it pretty much the day it came out, but it took me a little bit to get my ideas together, and I think I'm finally ready to go ahead and share my thoughts on this book. It's called Diamonds and Curls, and it was released by Kim Berry on March 17th, 2019. It was independently published. So no major publishing houses have their name attached to this one. So first I'm going to go through a general overview of what you get in the book. Then I'm going to detail a couple of my takeaways from the book. And then we'll get into the final conclusion. So when going into this book, I had an idea of what I was going to be getting. When I think of Prince's stylist is going to go ahead and release a book, I thought after maybe a brief intro and then, you know, getting to know Kim a little bit, we were going to be thrown into a world of the different styles. I can see the book structured each chapter after each of Prince's most iconic styles and, and obviously telling us how those came to be and her part in those. I think that would have been a really cool book. That is not what we get. Instead, it's structured after the five C's of diamonds, which are cut, color, clarity, carrot, and certification. Okay, I mean, that's definitely a way to go about this book, and it's not necessarily bad structure, but it seems more like the structure I would expect from, say, Prince's Jeweler. But that aside, not the worst way to structure a book. So cool, it's gonna have five main chapters which kind of explains why we only ended up with a 196 page book with lots of padding in the beginning and the end to make it that short book, to make it a little lighter than I think any of us expected. The cover of the book itself is actually pretty good. Great graphic design there. Though this book is kind of being sold as a memoir, so for the person who the book is actually about to not be on the cover, Kim Berry, that struck me as a little odd. Though, when you hear my review of this book, it may make a little bit more sense. So the prelude of the book is actually the story of how Kim heard about Prince's death and the following days afterwards. This part of the book was pretty riveting. I actually really enjoyed reading this particular part because it really made you feel like you were there with her. Then we get into the five C's. Cut is the first, and it essentially is, so cut is the first chapter, and it essentially focuses on the foundation, what things shaped her into who she is today. It covers her school years, and how she got hooked up with Prince through a mutual friend, her boyfriend used to be his bodyguard. Second chapter is color, which denotes the quality of a diamond itself. In this case, the chapter focuses on the relationship between Kim and Prince. And it starts off with a really cool story about how the two of them kind of did a bunch of back and forth and came up with the look that eventually got used for the Rave Unto the Joy Fantastic cover with the ribbons and everything. I love that look. It then goes a little bit deeper into her schooling and her individual teachers and those people who were important to her in her life. Clarity for a diamond denotes the number of imperfections that it might have. And this is where the book kind of starts to veer off the road a bit. It mixes general stories of Kim's youth with the religious pursuits of Prince and kind of bounces back and forth. And in the middle of all of this stuff is stories about how he used to womanize and how he used to control people with money and how he was always kind of firing people, keeping the competition between his employees strong. And also gave us a little bit on how Kim felt that she stayed relevant to his team and that's why she stayed around for so long. It also gives us an in-depth look at Prince's time when he was in Jehovah's Witness, which is information that we hadn't had previously, but she was privy to it because she was his friend and they would have religious conversations. Carrot is the weight slash size of a diamond. So of course this chapter covers the weight of Prince's success and the effects on him. She goes a little bit into how she operated within this stardom as well. There was a point in the book where she talks about how Prince bought her a salon, which I thought was pretty cool. Didn't go nearly as deep into that as she could have. But overall, 
overall, this chapter actually reads more like a Prince history lesson. It talks about the slave years, and then it delves into Prince's childhood and starts throwing accusations at some of his family members, most notably his mom, and then dips back into Prince's hopes of how he wanted to change the industry. It kind of jumps around quite a bit. And certification is taking the other four classifications of a diamond and giving it a grade. And this is where Kim goes into yet another history lesson about Prince. A lot of it is about Prince's love of taking on apprentices and his relationship to women, specifically, both as being a mentor to them and not. And then it talks about how Prince met Maite. And if you've read Maite's book, The Most Beautiful, then you've read most of the last chapter of Kim's book. Beat for beat, she talks about Maite's upbringing, how Maite met Prince, working with the MPG, their eventual wedding, tells the story of how they lost their son, and even goes into the Oprah interview that they did shortly after that. And then the book ends. So some of my major takeaways from this book, and I have to warn you, they're not gonna be all great. The first one is that it's poorly put together. As many of you know, I'm also a book writer, publisher, editor, designer, all these things. So I've spent a lot of my life figuring out what it takes to put something in front of a reader that is worth their time. This book needed another editing pass, maybe two, and definitely some more proofing. Throughout the book, there's grammatical errors, spelling errors, things like that, that could have been easily caught. But on the whole, the book just feels too stream of consciousness. It's not organized correctly. It bounces around and lacks focus. So on the editing, there is one particular piece that I really wanted to call attention to, and it bugged me because it's at the very beginning of the book. At the beginning of the book where you get all the testimonials, all the people who are there to give Kim credence for her job. There is one particular quote that the first line reads, Kim Berry is duplicity at its best. And I had to read that a few more times so I could make sure that I got that that's what they actually said. No one who read this book, edited this book, proofed this book, or any of the different stages before it hits the public looked up the word duplicity and found out that it means two-faced and deceitful. Now, if this book was professionally edited, an editor would have gone back to the person who gave the quote and said, hey, this word might be taken wrong. Can we replace that with something else? Because the rest of the quote was trying to paint Kim in a good light. But that very first sentence ended up coloring my entire interpretation of this book and how I read it. And one of the big running themes of this book is Kim telling other people's stories. At the very beginning of the book, she actually tells us that this is not going to be a tell-all, and then commences with giving us a tell-all book. Which is weird, because as far as I was concerned, the book was supposed to be about Kim Berry, and yes, her time with Prince, but it needs to be about her. And that's just the thing. You can tell by reading the book that it has potential. All of the pieces that are talking about her the parts where she's talking about her schooling, the parts where she was talking about coming up with looks with Prince. There was a particular part that I liked when she was telling the story about how Manuela wanted to get her fired. Her actual experiences were very interesting to read, but there was a whole lot of history lesson and then, and then you know what I heard, sort of sections. It almost felt like Lion King one and a half, if anybody has seen that movie, where the main story is happening in the background and we're just getting little snippets of, oh man, and then I saw that thing, and then I also was there even though you didn't see me, that sort of storytelling. Kim even puts the entire Oprah Winfrey interview in the book, question by question. Honestly, a lot of it felt like padding and trying to get a book that was a certain number of pages. And on that note of telling other people's stories, you don't tell stories about other people's kids. At first it was just a little annoying, and then when it got to the part about Prince and Maite's son Amir and his birth and all of the hospital stay and all of that stuff, it really rubbed me the wrong way. It actually kind of made me mad because that was a story that should have been told by either Maite or by Prince. And Maite did tell that story, but essentially Kim usurped that story and tried to make it part of her story. It's the ultimate example of Kim telling other people's stories in this book. And I get why it's there, because she was with Prince while he was trying to process it all, and I think if it was told more from that angle, it might have been better. But instead, it was a history lesson of the relationship between Prince and Maite, which again, had already been told in Maite's book, The Most Beautiful. 
And that is not only telling somebody else's story, but stealing somebody else's story, in my opinion. So in the end, I don't think I can wholeheartedly recommend this book. I'd maybe give it one and a half, two stars at most, and those stars are because of the small glimpses of information about Prince that she does reveal in there that are not that tabloidy. But as a book, it really needed more time to bake. It really just felt too rushed. The end hints at this being part one of an ongoing series of books but I'm not too sure I'd pick up any other volumes in this story. So that's my review of Kim Berry's Diamonds and Curls. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and it maybe give you a glimpse into what the book kind of entails. If you've read the book, let me know what you thought of the book. If you haven't read the book, are you still gonna pick it up? Let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to follow us on social media at PrincessFriendYT on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash princessfriend. And obviously, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the, and hit the bell notification so that you are always alerted when we release new videos. Otherwise, may you live to see the dawn. I love you all.